I've not seen such bravery. Back to the island. Brick by brick, talk by tick, no matter how thin, no matter how thick. Even though I regularly played Lego Island as a kid, I've never actually touched the sequel. The game was released in 2001 and was developed by Silicon Dreams. The fact that Mindscape, the company that developed the first title, doesn't seem to be involved in any way makes me a little uneasy. Silicon Dreams did develop a handful of soccer games though, so surely we're in good hands. The game opens with a promising cinematic following Pepper as he skateboards around the island delivering pizzas. While it appears that he is still stuck in his dead-end pizza delivery job, Pepper has undergone some changes since last we saw him. He's got a brand new headset and some badass elbow and shoulder pads to remind us that safety is cool. The Brickster is behind bars again, but it looks like he has another pizza-based escape plan hatching in his eyes. The Infomaniac tells us that the citizens of Lego Island are all donating bricks to build us a house, but first we have to deliver pizzas to them. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. I'd deliver a few pizzas for a new house anyway. Right off the bat, you can notice some major differences from the original game. For starters, Lego Island 2 is in the third person instead of first. Now, I'm not really sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing, so I'll just file that one under... thing. Unlike the first game, we're able to walk on the grass and even swim around in the water. Most, if not all of the inhabitants on the island from the first game make a return in Lego Island 2. The island looks much different now, but has a lot of the same buildings as the first game. The difference here is that you really can't go into many of the buildings, which is kind of extremely disappointing. Anyway, enough of that for now, let's deliver some pizzas. This guy here looks pretty hungry. Rob, I got your pizza here. Pepper, I haven't forgotten your chili surprise. I hope this pizza is the one I ordered this time. What the hell is wrong with that guy's voice? I don't know why, but I get the feeling that he's going to murder me the second I turn my back. I have some bricks for you, Pepper. Don't worry, none of them explode or anything like that. Honest! As it turns out, though, Rob here is not the only one in the game to have a downright horrible voice. Keeping busy, huh, Pepper? I've only just put the phone down. Shush, Pepper! Not so loud! Pepper's pizza makes me dribble. If I lived on this island, I don't think I would ever leave my house for fear of having to listen to one of my neighbors speak. But before we have a house to hide in, we've got to finish cramming pizza into these people's annoying face holes. Oh look, the spastic jet ski lady is in this game. She doesn't seem too hungry though, because she just kind of throws the pizza on the ground and stares me down like, Walk away, bitch. This guy didn't even stop at just throwing his pizza on the ground. He actually waved at me and was all, Yeah, thanks for the hot circle of shit, douchebag. On the other of the spectrum though, this lady likes her so much that she just sits down right there on the ground and starts chowing down. And then there's this guy. I didn't give him a pizza, but he seems pretty content with eating the ambulance's tire. <laughs> Tire. I tried to talk to him, and aside from some personal space violations, things seem pretty normal. Just a discussion about Legolitis phalanges. Then suddenly... Sounds nasty. What is it? Don't worry, Pepper. It's just what happens when you accidentally step barefoot on loose Lego. For a moment there, I thought it was New Year's, because I'm pretty sure I heard some balls drop. <laughs> The last pizza needs to be delivered to the top of a mountain, and to deliver it, Pepper single-handedly makes physics his bitch. Once all the pizzas have been delivered, Pepper's house is complete. Inside, there are some shelves to display our non-existent trophies, and a computer. Nothing inside the house is really relevant until we get out and play the game some more. Looks like Papa needs us for just the one more teeny eeny weeny pizza delivery job. You got it, Papa, cause I'm the dude with the food and I'm on my way. You know, the voice acting is pretty awful in this game so far, but Pepper has to take the prize for worst voice. Hey, Pepper. Okay, maybe he gets second place. Open your trails, I see. Before we find out what other pizza needs to be delivered, let's take a moment to explore this mysterious unmarked building. Oh, a skateboard minigame. All right, cool. Let's skate it up. Tony Hawk says that. I don't even think I have a word to describe how awful this is. It makes Razor Freestyle Scooter look like a fucking masterpiece. I can't even figure out how to do a trick. Wait, wait, what was that? Was that a trick? Yes, right there, the... 
the greedy brickster. But that can't even come close to my all-time favorite trick. Nice fish. Okay, okay. Let's just get back to work on delivering that. Oh my god, what happened to Mama Bricolini? She must have been taking some ugly lessons since the last game because she seriously looks like a monster. The pizza is supposed to be delivered to the brickster, which is exactly what allowed him to break free in the first game. There's even still a no pizza sign in front of the jail. You'd think that these three would have learned from their mistake in the first game, but Mama and Papa Dumbass and the No Brain Wonder seem more than ready to let the criminal loose once again. Or maybe not. There's Officer Laura. Surely she'll stop Pepper before he... Oh, hi, Pepper! Or maybe not. Step back and watch my dragon breath blow. Well, the Brickster gets free, and Pepper is... Wait! You didn't pay for your pizza! Still stupid. The Brickster steals something called the Constructopedia. There's really no explanation as to what it is, but when he tears pages from it, buildings on the island fly up into the sky. So, I mean, that's probably not a good thing. However, it is a good thing that this powerful book was kept in a very safe and secure location. That way, nobody could just walk right in and take it. I'm gonna fix us some drinks. So now we're introduced to the main part of the game, which consists of retrieving the pages of the book that the Brickster threw away, as well as occasionally disposing of the evil Brickster bots, who continually terrorize the island using elementary school level annoyance tactics. This is a huge departure from the first game, which is kind of disappointing. Instead of encouraged exploration, multiple playable characters, and playing the game at your own pace, LEGO Island 2 features a linear storyline, which forces you to play mini games that you might not actually want to play. Another strange thing is that I don't think you're actually able to build anything in this installment. Unlike the first game, all of the vehicles are already assembled. You are able to change their appearance, but only to preset designs, which is kind of boring. And have I mentioned the loading times yet? I swear that half of my time playing this game was spent watching this damn spinning pizza disc, only to be rewarded with compelling cutscenes such as We need a fast-thinking, smart-acting, brave, clean, and reverent hero to save the day. Peppa, what are you doing? My best. Are you fucking kidding me? If you encounter some trouble when trying to find the Constructopedia pages that are scattered about the island, it becomes apparent very quickly that every single person on the island knows where they are, except for Pepper. The first time you talk to an islander, they'll say something immensely intelligent, such as, We may not look like we can, but Pepper, we do. And then if you talk to them a second time, they'll point in the direction of one of the pages. This is true throughout the game for any of your objectives. So that just means that the only person in the entire game who doesn't know where things are or what the hell is going on is Pepperoni. Pepper Mother Brickin Roni. My best. After killing the Brickster bots and collecting some of the pages, this happens. I guess it's a way to dispose of the Brickster bots, maybe? But it looks like the Infomaniac went ahead and crawled in the machine as well. We already know that he's a complete moron, so I'm not even gonna try and figure out what compelled him to do that. Thanks to a radio transmission, we find out that the Brickster is now on Castle Island, which is a place, apparently. Let's get him! He owes me for the pizza! Do we even really want to save these people? I'm getting the feeling that everyone is here on this island because the United States of LEGO deemed them too stupid to live in their country anymore and exiled them here. Castle Island is hardly even worth talking about. It starts off with a diving minigame that's about as challenging as it is fun. It isn't. We acquire a horse by means of some guy literally throwing it to us, continuing the trend of animal throwing from the first game. Pepperoni on a pony. Then there's a button mashing jousting mini game, followed by a cannon battle with this guy. <laughs> The cannon battle was a little fun, if for no other reason than that it's fun to shoot at this annoying dude. <laughs> well, that's all there is for the castle portion of the game, and our return to the main island brings back the familiar game mechanic of finding pages. Apparently during my lengthy visit to Castle Island, everyone on the main island just sat around with their thumbs up their asses, because it sure as shit doesn't look like they tried to help me out with finding any of these pages. 
Pepper, I hereby deputize you so you can use the police helicopter, which is pretty cool. Whoa, it is cool, but I bet I can make it look even cooler. Personally, I can't think of anything cooler than the white helicopter. The next portal, which is accessed via helicopter, takes us to Adventurer's Island, where we meet Johnny Thunder and Pippin Reed. This takes us to one of the worst minigames in the entire game. At first it's all, oh, I'm shooting giant snakes, this is kinda cool. But then you quickly realize that if you just keep shooting forward, the snakes can't hit you and there's no need to even aim. Not to mention that the level lasts way too long, and the whole time you have to listen to, I got one, 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 I got one. Hello, Johnny and Miss Reed. I see you brought a friend. Yes, Doctor. This is Pepper, and he's... Pepperoni! It's like he's just trying to figure out the most annoying way to introduce himself. Oh, dude, I wonder how I can make these people instantly hate me. Oh, I know. I'll just go... Pepperoni! All right. Okay, keep it together, Moose. You've got an island of dumbasses to save. And you won't be able to save them unless you keep your mind focused on another whack-a-mole game and a very generic memory game. The two mini games after that are vehicle-based, the first one being in a car and the second one taking place in a plane. Okay, so there is a fishing mini game in between them, but I'm just gonna skip over that. It's boring, just trust me. The driving stage is completely terrible. The car's handling is a brickin' joke, and as you try to navigate around trees, rocks, and other obstacles, Pepper takes it upon himself to let you know that Driving ain't like skateboarding. The next level involves flying a plane. I actually failed this minigame a few times because you have to be sure to pick up fuel as you go or the plane will run out. This proved to be pretty difficult. Difficult, that is, until I found a little workaround. When Pepper runs into a wall, the game automatically resets the position of the plane, at the same time moving it forward. So I beat the stage by simply crashing my plane over and over. Now you may see this as cheating, but I see it as, well, cheating. But also I don't give a shit. Oh, what's going on here? Volcanoes? Dinosaurs? Giant eggs? A hot air balloon airlifting prehistoric creatures to safety? Nothing out of the ordinary to see here, so let's just move along. Back on the main island, the Brickster kidnapped Mama and Papa. The only thing worse than the Infomaniac's reaction... No! ...is Peppers. Whoa, what? How? I mean, who? What the? At this point, I'm pretty sure they're just intentionally trying to make me hate this kid. And they're doing a great job. So let's just try and wrap this up, shall we? After defeating more Brickster bots, this time using the power of music for some reason. It's time to start training to go into space, because that's where the Brickster is. Sure, why not? The only minigame I kind of enjoyed comes in the form of a skydiving game. It's short and simple, but well done. Skydive through three rings, then parachute down and land on a target. And with that, we're ready to go into space. Who knew that space training was so simple? It took no time at all, and before you can say, Pepperoni! We're on the Brickster's planet, which is cleverly named Ogle. Time to make some space people. Pizzas. Space pizzas are considerably more difficult to make than regular pizzas, because in space it is literally impossible to just stand over here and put the ingredients on a pizza crust. You be careful. We are almost done with the game, but not before a super annoying platforming level. How would you like to suddenly find out that you don't actually move with the platform that you're standing on? It's always a pleasant surprise when you have to start over for a bullshit reason, right? Once we finally climb the tower, all we have to do is throw some pizzas at the Brickster, and the island is saved. Oh hey look, that must be Pepper's terrifying sister. Well, if you're going to live on a secluded island with just a handful of people, incest is bound to happen sometime, am I right? I did not enjoy LEGO Island 2. I am very nostalgic for the first game, and I enjoy replaying that one, but this game is just way too different. I mean, it's LEGO, they're on an island, and pizza is involved, but the way the game is structured is just a total departure from what made the first game so great. LEGO Island 1 gave me a chance to feel like I was actually a part of the island, but LEGO Island 2 just threw me into a storyline and filled it with random mini-games. It's impossible to be absolutely certain, but I'm pretty sure that my younger self would have been and disappointed with Lego Island 2. Now I don't think I would despise it or anything like that, but after playing both games, I think I would have replayed the first game more than I would replay the second. Yeah. yeah I'm, 
That should be good.